All right, so we've now made a stone model. I duped it in alginate, and I'm now ready to create my, uh, my screw channels. Now, one of the reasons why I like to teach new users to the system to actually make a physical model, it's worth the 10 minutes to make the model, um, is because there's a risk that you will overheat the temporary cylinder in the prosthesis and dislodge it. So if you have a physical model to go back to, great. You're, you're going to be able to repair it or fix it on a model rather than having to go back to the patient's mouth. All right, so now that we've got this physical model, I feel comfortable proceeding with the screw channels. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get underneath the prosthesis, and just like we did in the mouth, we're going to twist it just a little bit, and it pops right off. I'm going to set this to the side because I no longer need that. And now I'm going to use the first drill in a series of three drills. All right, so it's going to go pilot drill, then access drill. And if you look at this drill, it's, it's actually got the tip, the same tip diameter as my pilot drill. And then there's a wider portion of the drill, about six millimeters down from the tip. It's wider, and so that's going to enlarge the diameter of the screw channel to the final diameter after we've done our pilot drill. So the first thing we do is put our pilot drill in our laboratory handpiece, and it's a really, really nice laboratory handpiece. Don't waste your time with a cheap, inexpensive, and just uh, laboratory handpiece that's not going to keep its torque. Get a really nice one. Set your, your uh, speed to like 1,500, uh, I guess that's 15,000 RPM, but it's a number 15 setting on the handpiece. And now I can see the angulation of the tie base, so I want to just kind of rest my my pilot drill in the center of that tie base and then just try to get centered. I'm not pushing down, I'm just kind of centering there. And now I'm going to depress my foot pedal and now I'm going to just let the, let the pilot drill kind of do its work, all right? I'm gonna clean the flutes off here. Go down just a little bit more, come all the way through. And now you see that we have just a very, very small hole. And we'll do this three more times. There's the second one, the third one, and then the fourth one here. All right? So that's all it takes to do the pilot drill. And now if you look, you can see four very, very small holes directly in line with those tie bases. All right, so now that we've got our pilot holes drilled, we're going to switch to our access drill, maintaining the 15,000 RPM on the lab, uh, laboratory handpiece. And now you can see that this pilot drill tip, I'm sorry, this access drill tip fits into that pilot hole Precisely, they're the same diameter, right? So that's why I'm able to put that on the drill and just let that denture rest on it. So now I'm going to show you that, that we're going to hold the drill steady and we're going to push the denture down until we see that tip come through the tie base and project above the plane of the seat, seating surface of the tie base about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters. So we get, it, we get it started, and now you see how I'm pinching my fingers on either side of the tie base? Now I'm going to push the denture down onto the drill. I'm not moving the drill, I'm pushing the denture down onto the drill until that uh, tip comes through about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters. And now once I get down there, I'm going to just kind of bounce up and down a couple times. And I can hear myself on the tie base. I hear kind of metal on metal. I don't want to be putting a lot of pressure while I do that because metal on metal creates friction. Friction leads to heat. Heat uh, softens the acrylic, and then you can dislodge the tie base. And I'll show you in a 
troubleshooting video, how that happens, and then what to do if it should happen. All right, so now we'll do that again for the second hole. Again, I get the drill started, and now I'm just going to push the denture down in line until I see that tip come through. And then I just bounce up and down a couple times until I hear metal on metal. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the, the, the separable fastener, the head of the separable fastener is stuck inside that tie base. And there's acrylic all the way down to the head of that separable fastener. In order for that head, the head of that separable fastener to come out, I've got to get rid of all of that acrylic. So some people say, oh, this is a really tough step to remove the head of the separable fastener. But if you do the second step, the second drill out step properly, then getting the head out is super, super easy. And I'll show you in just, the, in just a little bit. So we do the next two. And then the last one right here. You can also see that this doesn't really take long. It's just real quick and easy. All right. And now we've got the final, the final diameter of those screw channels drilled in there. All right, so now the next step is getting the head of the separable fastener out of the tie base. We've created a pathway, but now I'm just going to go in there and by hand make sure that it's a cleared pathway, all the debris out of there, and create the path for the head of the separable fastener to come out. This instrument right here is called a pin vise, and it is meant to hold drills by hand. So you put the, what we call the clearance drill into the pin vise far enough that the, the clamp of that or the collet of that pin vise is on the solid shank of that drill bit. And I'm just going to tighten that down as much as I can by hand and that should be good enough for me to go. So now we, we teach what we call the five times five rule. And that looks something like this. We're going to turn the drill about five times clockwise. It doesn't do you any good to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The drill is only cutting in a clockwise motion, right? So we just turn it clockwise five times with light pressure. I'm pushing lightly on that tie base and I'm turning it five times. So there's the first of five, five turns. Now the next one, I'm going to wobble my wrist and just create a little bit of slop while turning that drill five times clockwise. Now I'm going to push really hard and turn the drill about five times clockwise. Now I'm going to lighten my pressure and turn it five times clockwise. So now I'm on the fourth of five turns clockwise. And now I'm going to keep turning it about five times while withdrawing the drill bit from the screw channel and there's nothing on the drill bit, so it didn't come out. Now I'm going to just take my pilot drill and push and then you see that head of the separable fastener come out. So I'm just going to demonstrate what we've just done here. When we did our pickup, we used the screw to hold this, the tie base to the multi-unit abutment. We filled our denture with acrylic and then we pulled that off. We separated the, the screw into two parts, the threads and this head of the separable fastener, the head of the screw. The head of that screw was covered completely with acrylic. And so now what we did was we just, from the underside, we drilled through that. And then we came down with a wider diameter and bottomed out on the top of this tie base right here. And then by hand, we were going in there and trying to engage the drill with this peak cap and pull it out. 
Well, it didn't come out on the tip. And so all I did was I used my pilot drill and pushed that fragment all the way out the screw channel until you see it here on my pilot drill. So that's the same part that you're seeing right there. These have to come out. If, you, if they remain in the tie base, then you won't be able to put a prosthetic screw in the prosthesis and screw it down to the multi-unit abutment. So you've got to get all four of those out. So again, let's review this five times five. I'll do it faster this time and kind of in real time motion. So with light finger pressure, I'm turning it five times. Now I'm wobbling my wrist and turning it five times. Now I'm pushing real hard and turning five times. Now I'm lightening my pressure and turning it five times. And now I'm pulling back. And it didn't come out on my drill, so I know I have to go fishing for or pushing it out. And you can see, there we are. It's on my finger right here. So there's the second of four. Now I want to show you another technique that kind of uh, replaces this. It might not replace it completely, so I'd like to teach both techniques. But using that number eight round burr, I can go down this screw channel, and I'm just going to bounce a couple times on the head of that tie base, or on the top of that tie base. And then that should clear it enough that I can take my pilot drill and just push it out. So let's see. So here I'm just going and, and bouncing a couple times on the top of that tie base. And now I should be able to push that out. I have a little bit of resistance there, so it may not have been enough. But there it is. So there's the third one. And we'll do that one more time with the round burr. So here you see I just kind of bounce up and down a couple times. And that's just clearing debris out of the screw channel so that I have a clear path for the head of that separable fastener to come out. It's important to note that I, I wasn't pushing hard on that round burr. This one's giving me a little bit more resistance. So I'm going to go down one more time. And try pushing it out. And this is where it's good to know the two techniques because of, oh, there it goes. So now we've got the four peak caps out from the inside of those tie bases. So once this gets cleaned up, sprayed off, it would be ready to go back to the patient's mouth with prosthetic screws fitting into those tie bases. But one last check. I, I know that I got all four of those out, but another way for you to know, like let's say they get completely mangled up, another way for you to know that you've got all the, separ the heads of the separable fasteners out is you can put this drill into the tie base and you should see the tip of that drill bit moving around. So I can see that tip and I know that that plastic head is out. So I go in here and I can see the tip but I also feel that there's no resistance in there. It's nice and easy for me to turn that drill bit. So I know that that's free and clear. If there was still a separable fastener head in there, I would feel resistance and I wouldn't be able to see the tip. So that's how you can just check real quick and easy to make sure that the peak caps are out. The third check that you can do is to put a prosthetic screw in there and you should see the threads come out through the aperture of the tie base. So those three things that you do, visual inspection, with the peak caps coming out, visual inspection with the, with the drill, making sure that you can see the tip, or visual inspection of the threads actually coming through the tie bases.